Hello and welcome back to Steam with Steve. Today we're going to keep going on with our Pythagorean exploration. I'm going to look at something called the Pythagorean triads, or sometimes known as the triplets. Now this is what Pythagoras killed people over. The idea here was that he only believed in whole integer numbers being part of the Pythagorean theory. He did not understand nor appreciate irrational numbers. So the square root of two, for example, freaked him out and he wouldn't um, buy into it. So we're going to unpackage a little bit of that and see how that goes. Let's jump on in. The Pythagorean triplets, they've been around, like I said, when Pythagoras found this 2,500 years ago. So there's some really cool, neat stuff. And what he found was there's these numbers that appeared in nature, and this is not man-made, that had these perfect integer number representations that would bind with each other. So we're going to go through and understand what Pythagorean triads or triplets look like. We're going to see the ratio pattern as well that happens behind that. So if we, we've already done this with the 3, 4, 5 triangle and noticing that if we doubled all the sides, you'd have the 6, 8, 10 triangle. So triads exist like that as well. We're then going to work out how to use them um, for some direct calculations as well. So Pythagoras, like I said, many, many years ago existed um, and he built this really cool um, theorem. And the idea was basically he found that the, the hypotenuse squared on a right angle triangle is equal to the other two sides squared added together. Now he found that if you increase the ratios in sides, then it would sort of work out and then the, the balance would sort of come through. So the, fir the first triad that he found was a simple three, four, five triangle. So he basically worked down that if all three sides are integers they, and they satisfy the Pythagorean theorem, that is what a triad. So the first one was the three, four, five. So five squared is equal to three squared plus four squared. And then I found this dodgy wrap. So let's just listen to that. And then these are the first four triads. Three, four, five, five, twelve, thirteen, eight, fifteen, seventeen, seven, twenty-four, twenty-five. Three, four, five, five, twelve, thirteen, eight, fifteen, seventeen, seven, twenty-four, twenty-five. Remember that the Pythagorean triples and its multiples. 345, 5, 12, 13, 8, 15, 17, 7, 25. <laughs> That's awesome. So yeah, I just had to put it in there. So the first 20 Pythagorean triads are actually this. So you got the 3, 4, 5, then the 5, 12, 13, 7, 24, 25, 8, 15, 17, and then 9, 40, and then that equals 41 squared. Now that goes on for a while. So there's another set. So you've got the 11, the 12, the 13, and then it skips the 14, the 15, the 16, and the 17, 19, 20, 20, and then a 21. And then you've got, it gets a little bit bigger. And yeah, so one of the questions you had for homework was to find all the triplets that were below 100 as one of the sides. So you can see there's a three, four, five, this one, 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 this one. nope, yep. Nope, nope, yep. And I think we're pretty much there. Um, so that's the first 20 um, Pythagorean triads that satisfy that rule that Pythagoras had worked out, okay? You can then get the first 100. So there's the three, four, five, five, 12, 13, seven, 24, et cetera. And that's, we're getting way bigger here now. So we're up to 96, 1,151, 1,153. This, Triplets goes on for infinity. There's an infinite amount of these that pop up, um, which is really, really cool when you start looking at them. Now to show you how that works, I actually made a bit of Python code. So I'm gonna show you how quickly you can actually build this. You don't expect to understand this code. You just need to understand the input and the output. So if I paste this in here into Python, and then press enter. I now have the access to a thing called the triplets function. And inside that, I can put in um, different numbers. So if I want to find the first 10 triplets, that's what it's done. Then that's all the way up to 10. Um, let's go up to 20. Oh. Which is pretty cool. So it's got all the ones that go up to 20. Triplets. 100. Whoop. Got a spell. And then just for the lulls, uh, we'll go 
generate triplets. A lot more. But hopefully, this is the largest one that they came up with 240, 320, and 400. The, the numbers are getting quite big now. So that gives you some insight that it goes on and on forever. There is no end to the triads. So example number one, we want to check to see if it is a triad. And this also checks to see if they're right angled triangles as well. So you insert a number into Pythagoras formulas. Um, you solve the left hand side and then check to see that it equals the right hand side. So if we, we know that this is a triplet already, um, but we're just going to go through the process. So the first step is we write the rule h squared is equal to a squared plus b squared. We then sub everything into it. So we know the hypotenuse is 10 and the other two sides are 6 and 8. So we're just going to jam those in. So 10, 8 and 6. We balance it out. So we've got 10 squared equals 64 plus 36. 10 squared equals 100. Does 100 equal 100? Yes. So therefore it is a triad. Then we can try this triangle. And then hopefully you're finding intuitively already that that probably isn't going to work. So four and five with a nine, that's probably a little bit too big for a nine. So the shape probably physically doesn't exist, but we can try it. So we go through the process. So we put in a nine, then we get equals four and five. Then we go nine squared equals 16 plus 25. Nine squared equals 81. 81 does not equal 41. Therefore, this is not a valid triad. Pretty cool, right? So um, that's basically the process of working out whether or not it is a triad or not. So you can please copy that into your books. Challenge number one, have a go at that. Just pause the video and have a go. Same process. Awesome. So I'm going to do this again in Excel because it's kind of cool. Um, I do have the answers here, but it could be kind of interesting to do it in Excel as well. Just going to go up there, delete everything. Oh. Contents, and let's go. I'm going to build a triad checker. So I'm going to go button use, leg one. And then I'm going to go hypotenuse squared. And then we'll go um, the right hand side. So it's going to be the right hand side of the equation. This is going to be the left hand side. So the first one, the hypotenuse, has to be the largest side. So therefore, it has to be six. And the legs have to be four and three. So I'm going to go this side here equals this to the power of two, which gives us 36. And then I'm going to go this side is equal to four, to the power of two plus three, to the power of two and it equals 25. So then is it a triad? And then the answer is going to equal if this cell here equals that cell there, which is false in this case. So six, three, four, nah, no, not a clue. So B, let's try it. So the biggest side is going to be five, then four, and then two. Nope, that doesn't work. This one we do know works. Does we know it does work? Sorry. So we'll go five, four, three. And that is true. Then we'll try 15, 12, and then 9. So that is also true as well. Then 13, 12, and 5. That's true as well. So we've got 169. Then 6, 5, 2. Nope, that didn't work. 41, 40, 9. That's true as well. Then the biggest side's 20. 12, and then 10, ah, that didn't work. And then 12, nine, and four, false. So hopefully that's giving you some little insight of a different way of doing it. 
Pride's work and ratios, hopefully you've picked up on that as well. So you can go through and as long as you're consistent by dividing and multiplying each side by the same amount, you can um, use one of the original triads to derive a new one. So for example, three, four, five, if we go through and times everything by two, we can get a triad, a new set of triad values with the 10, the eight and the six. Similarly, if we times the original triangle, the three, four by three, we can get a triangle where the hypotenuse is 15, balances with 12 and then nine. Similarly, if we times it all by 10, you can likewise get gamma zero on the end, you've got 50, 40 and 30. So hopefully that's giving you some insight. Um, there's a Pythagorean tri triad worksheet to go through, which basically gets you to work out the legs and go from there. So please use this um, Google PowerPoint, uh, sorry, this PowerPoint or jump onto Google to find some triads as well if you, if you do get stuck with the calculations, but you should be okay. And yeah, that's hopefully giving you some insight. So hopefully you understand now what Pythagorean triads look like and how they sort of work. Um, it's very clear that they have to be integer whole numbers. They can't use decimal or irrational numbers in it. So it's very, very important that you understand that is the difference between that and a triad. So that's it from me. Hopefully you've enjoyed. Thank you very much for watching. And yeah, see you next time on Steam with Steve. Adios.